Dave? Hey. You're on with Ann Wilson. Hello. Hey, Ann. Hey. Aloha. You can hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Fantastic. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great. The Workforce Afternoon. And Dave Lawrence with you. Grateful you're listening. Joining us now, my next guest, a very special woman whose voice is legendary the world over. It was a great honor when she was on the workforce with me last summer, and now we get to speak again, this time about the new studio album, Jupiter's Darling, as well as the remastered and expanded reissues of Little Queen, Dog and Butterfly, and Baby Lestrange. It's a thrill to welcome back Heart lead vocalist Ann Wilson. Aloha, Ann. Aloha. How are you? I'm very good. A big mahalo for taking time to speak with us. Oh, my pleasure. We've been uh, all over the oldest story in the world and, and, and playing it just a ton. It's such a catchy tune. And, and every time I hear it, I'm still trying to figure out the message. I have an idea, but I was just curious if you can just provide some insight into it. <laughs> well, oldest story in the world is, is a kind of a, um, a song about, about frustration. It's, it's, it talks about what is going on in the culture and how it's it's just too much for it gets too hard for people to fight against it and so they just accept it you know it's just the oldest story in the world we just kind of go on accepting what's spoon fed to us and you know um uh it's it's kind of not a tirade against but it it's saying look what's going on here you know we're being really manipulated and um that's the story. I, I get that too. That's that's basically it, it yeah. goes along with the inside of Jupiter's Darling. There's a, there's a, a statement on the inside panel, and it's sort of it gives the impression, and, and along with what you just said, I I hear that frustration in the song. And and is there sort of a, a, a linkage, like an intended theme or concept throughout the record? It does seem to come up a few times. You know, like it comes up again in in uh, let's see, which song is that? Uh, well, it, it does come up a few times, um, just the idea of, hey, uh, wake up and look at what's happening. You know, you, we can't just kind of slide along in, our, in our, sleep, our sleep state, you know. We've got to see what's being sold to us. And, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's not a political album, really. It's, it's more an album that is more human, you know. It's about, you know, us as people and... And how do we get along on this planet and remain ourselves? How do we not get taken over by the media and by the the message, the massage of the media, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, too, didn't see a, a direct connection between all of it because I can point to a few songs that, that I was curious about, like, for example, The Perfect Goodbye and, and other ones on there which were more felt like about relationships. Yeah, yeah, they're more sort of romantic. Or yeah, romantic and, and good relationships, bad relationships, uh -huh. looking back, looking, looking forward. And, and a song like The Perfect Goodbye, where does that, is that one that Nancy wrote the lyrics to or who wrote the lyrics on that? Well, we all worked on that song. Together, you guys both, com you, you all contributed yeah, Nancy lines. and I and Craig Bartok. Okay. And um, uh, Cameron's Cameron Crow, Nancy's husband, who's a writer, um, had that title lying around in one of his scripts, and he never used it. And Nancy really liked it, and so she asked him if she could use it. Oh wow! And he said, "Yeah." So we we used it. Nice. Oh, that's cool. So Cameron Crow provided the title. Yeah. Oh, a, a legendary person. And so uh, emotionally, is there is there? Can you tell? Can you talk about where that song is? That song directed at a certain situation or person? That's that song is about the the uh, the irony of saying the words the perfect goodbye because there is no such thing, you know they're always messy somehow, and uh, you know it's it's just it's it's about telling the truth and being open and honest and saying okay this isn't working we gave it our best shot, but it's just not going to work, so. See ya, you know. And and that one, you have primary. You and, and Craig have the, have the songwriting credits. Is that again a case where you and he shared the lyrics on that? That one was primarily Nancy and Craig. I helped, but they wrote most of it. The the enough one. On enough, yeah, that was me and Craig. Okay, but perfect goodbye was primarily yeah Nancy and Craig. Yeah. And and enough. Where does the where does that storyline come from? I mean, I just I it, it feels so. It's such a sensitive song. I mean, yeah. so many of these are like they're very deep and. Yeah, and they're kind of vulnerable too. Um, on enough, that was actually autobiographical. I mean, that really happened. I really developed these strong feelings for this man and and. Uh, he was just not able to 
to go there with me. And so, you know, it's it's just me kind of wondering, well, what's going on here, you know? <laughs> and uh, since then, it's all resolved itself. But that song was written com- completely from real life. And that word you used, you, you chose an interesting word, vulnerable. Um, and, and I find, I guess that's what endears me to many of the songs on the record uh, because they just seem so honest, and, and, and that term, that word, vulnerable, like uh, opening yourself up uh, and showing parts of you maybe that people, that may surprise people how, how honest or, or uh, revealing uh, the, the songs sound. Uh, is, is that difficult for you to, to, to share inside stuff like that, or after all these years of, of being a professional and writing songs, does it come easy? Well, I think that it, it may not come easy, but it's, it's, necessary you know because what i really want to do is provide songs that are authentic and as much as possible songs that are that haven't been done before you know i mean and so that has to come from real life for me um it's it's not necessarily easy especially when the the people around me know who it's about and sure the guy who it's about knows it's about him (laughs) you know all that kind of stuff but but i think it's where that song is concerned, it, it was long ago, uh, long enough ago now that that you know everybody's fine with it, and it's a beautiful song. Oh, it's it's an amazing song. Is it a release for you to then? Yeah, yeah, it is. And it was a way of sort of putting a lid on on a situation that wasn't going to happen, and sort of coming to terms and to closure with it. Sure, uh, it's it, it's a great one. I really uh, there's a lot of moments on the album that give you that, that very personal feeling, uh, like you're right there in your head seeing stuff, and, and it's not being, uh, you're not obstructing parts of it. You're showing people like good and bad and, and, and emotions that don't often seem to come out in a song. Like the That's tune, right, yeah. Like va- Vainglorious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one's, I love that one. It's, it's so, it's so kind of snotty. You know? Yeah, it is, and like yeah. cynical in some way. And, yeah. Uh, it, it, very interesting words in that one. Uh, in, in in an interesting song. Is there a particular situation that inspired it? That that song, you know, is is just about the person we all know who is just so full of themselves and just just loves himself beyond the pale and just has to has to just walk all over everybody and and be first in line always and uh, you know we all have that person in our life. And uh, that's what Bang Glorious is about. In fact, they really love that song over in England, over in the UK, because they love the word vainglorious, and they will actually use it. You know? Oh wow! So, so they're like, "Wow, we like this," <laughs> you know. And it's it's like a, a hit for an, an, another reason, sort of. Yeah. That's cool. Do, when you you talked about sort of the inspiration for some of these songs, do, do you ever recall stories or experiences from long ago, and they end up in new songs? Usually, the experiences get written down in songs as they go. You know, we don't usually refer back. So they're new things or, or current. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you get, you, I, I was just, you understand where I'm getting at? Like things like like today, if you were sitting thinking about something that maybe had rubbed you wrong or something that, that you would experience from decades ago, does it ever come to where you would be inspired to write about it? That doesn't happen, you're saying? Usually it happens at the time it's going on. Okay. You know, and the, like the, the, the songs on um, Jupiter's Darling, that are uh, that are about that are situational, you know, are current usually. Things that you had just recently sort yeah. of been through. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, I was just trying to get a perspective on where these when these experiences sort of took place. Yeah. Um, when you were kids, were you a nice girl, a tough girl, a bad girl? What? It, looking back, like if I, you know, as a guy, I'm asking you that. Yeah. Well, I was I was an outcast in school usually because. I think because my dad was in the military and we we were always in new schools like every other year we were in a new school so I was always the new girl so therefore I was always kind of the outcast and you know um didn't really have the same concerns most other girls did like uh hairstyles and boyfriends and dresses and all that kind of stuff that girls were into back then I was more into playing the guitar and and I was from someplace else always you know so when I finally settled down, when our family fi- uh, finally settled down in Seattle, uh, long enough for me to be in a school for more than a year, mm. things uh, began to change a little. I was never a popular girl, but 
I was always um, really, really integrated into the art department and the music department and was in the, all the school plays and the choir and the, really into the art department. And um, those, that's where my friends were. So you were showing that side early. Yeah. Is Kick It Out autobiographical then in a, in a way? When, when I read that and, or in, the lyrics to it and I listen, I just envision one of you two. Yeah, that's, that's definitely autobiographical. Wow. So that's you cranking it up in a school zone. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool to know that after all these years. <laughs> uh, just a couple more in and, I, and I'll let you go. Are, you're all right on time, by the way? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, Barracuda credits you first, Nancy second. As you recall, wh- what's the writing? How did that one come to be? Well, I wrote the, I wrote the lyrics as a whole piece. And... Nancy came in then with the music, is, and I think Roger Fisher is on that too, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. But the first two are, are you, and I was just curious, but you, you sort of explained it, so you had, the, you had the lyrics. Yeah. And she had the riff? Yeah, I think she, she, uh, she, she came up with the groove for it, you know, the, the galloping horse groove. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> a good way of describing it. <laughs> How close are, are, are you and Nancy these days? I mean, do you, do you, do you live near each other? Well, yeah, um, she... Of course, you know, is married to Cameron now, and uh, so they have a house in L.A., and she has a house here in Seattle, and right now now they're down shooting a movie in, in Kentucky. So they, they're leasing a house down there. So it's, you know, they're all over the place. But, like, when you guys aren't doing heart stuff, do you spend time to get, I mean, I know she has, she has Cameron, and doesn't she have twins? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, she does. So she's, I know she's, like, obviously busy being mom, and, and uh, is there time, though, you guys spend together doing non-heart things? Oh, yeah, you know, because we're in the same family, so we're, we, we get together as a family uh, when we're not doing heart, and uh, we see each other not as much as I think I'd like, but uh, we do see each other quite a bit when we're not doing the band. I hope you know that it's a relationship uh, that, that a lot of fans are really grateful survives and that you have this, this you know, because you guys are a magical element coming together to be heart. Well, that's, that's really great. I'll have to tell Nancy you said that. I hope, I hope you understand that's felt by many, many, many people all these years later, the fact that we, that we still have heart, that you are coming out, to, that you're there together. It's like it creates a certain energy, I, I think. Yeah. It's appreciated. Thank you for telling me that. That's, that's really nice to hear. That's really nice. And one final question, Anne, and then I'll let you go. Of all your dreams that, that you have yet to accomplish, what do you desire most that, that, that you want to do? Well, you know, I, I want to be, uh, for, for my own self, uh, beyond, you know, uh, helping my kids to come to adulthood in a cool way. For my own self, I think I would write, like to be able to be a happening artist and be able to continue to sing and, and um, have people's ear for, for as long as I can, for as long as it's, it's relevant, you know. That, to me, would be fulfilling because, you know, who knows, who knows how long it can go on. There's no precedent for, for how long people are going to be interested or, you know, because we're women and, and we're in rock and we're, we're not 20 anymore, you know. So, so it's, it's, uh, that, that's going to be interesting to find out, but I hope it, it can go on for as long as it's, it's cool and it's happening. And people dig it, and, and I dig it. Well, it's certainly happening now with Jupiter's Darling, and, and, I, and I just encourage you, please consider returning to Hawaii with Heart <laughs> Ann. I'd like to move to Hawaii, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we really want that to happen as well. But it would prior to moving here, perhaps on, on a uh, real estate uh, exploration, you'll come and maybe do a show. We'd, we'd really dig it. Oh, yeah, that, that w- would be cool. We haven't played there in so long. Yeah, it has been a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, how was that, Ann? Was that an okay interview? It was wonderful. Very Seriously? Wonderful. Thank you, yeah. And it's a thrill to talk to you again. I've always admired you. All that stuff I said is for real. Nice talking with you, too. And, and good luck with everything. We're, we just know we're committed to the record, and if you do get a chance to think about adding Hawaii to your itinerary, we would I love to. I will talk to the powers that be about that, because, you know, I... I'd like to do that, too. Yeah, it could be a fun experience. Yeah. You, could, you know, it, it couldn't hurt. So please do look into it. Hopefully there's a way it won't be fiscally too too damaging to, to come out here. Yeah. We do have The Who coming for two nights, so somehow oh, great. they're managing to sell tickets, so I've got to believe that maybe, <laughs> maybe your agent can find a way. 
I'll talk to him. Fantastic. <laughs> the new studio album is Jupiter's Darling. Also look for the remastered and expanded Little Queen, Dog and Butterfly, and Baby Lestrange. And please know, Anne, it's a tremendous honor. I thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, how was that, Anne? Was that an okay interview? It was wonderful. Hi, this is Ann Wilson from Heart, and whenever I'm in town, I listen to my friend Dave Lawrence. Awesome, and you have a tremendous day, a great tour, and again, I'm, it's a pleasure to have spoken with you. You're very patient. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Nice talking with you, too.